some decisions what I'm going to do with my Stratocaster kit. Uh, one of my first ideas was to make it similar to the Telecaster that I did. So yellow body, black pick guard, the black decals, and the other things I put on it, black to offset the yellow. Pretty basic. The other idea I had was when I bought that kit, the shop owner let me handle on his own suggestion, I didn't even ask for it, the $2,000 Eddie Van Halen Frankenstrat recreation. And if you're not familiar with that, I'll try and get a picture up here in the video. It's red, black, and white, wild stripes going all around. But not only that, uh, story goes that he was a teenager when he put this thing together. Didn't totally know what he was doing, but wound up with a working instrument, which if you know anything of his work, he made pretty well do with what he had. But like the five-way selector switch was sitting where a middle pickup is supposed to go. It had one humbucker put in there slightly askew. Uh, rumor has it that the neck pickup, there's one that was there, but that it didn't even work. It was just the one pickup system. Uh, it doesn't have the regular pick guard on it. It's just this partial black thing covering the electronics and it only has one knob coming out instead of the standard three it's a volume knob but he's got a tone cap on it so frankenstrat the, the thing is just a train wreck but uh it's a neat rock and roll look it, it's wild it's just uh iconic and so you know i thought about doing that i finally came up with the idea i wanted to do though i don't want to do the goofy butt electronics i you know, I still want to have the three functioning pickups, a normal five-way switch. And I like my black and yellow theme, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the Frankenstrat body design. I'm going to have to tape it off with all the wild stripes front and back. It's got some sort of like stripes coming down like this in the back. But I'm going to substitute the red with yellow. So it'll be a black, yellow, and white. Um... Something I'm thinking about here. I do have a black pick guard to put on it, but if I want to do the little partial pick guard thing, like he has it, like starts somewhere around here and covers the electronics. I've heard rumor, in fact, I've seen it on the internet, it's not a rumor. People taking old records and cutting them into pick guards. And I tried to size it up. You cannot quite fit the full Stratocaster pick guard on a record, it, it hangs off the edges in one place or another no matter how you align it. The ones I saw did it with a telly or other smaller pit guards. But if I just do the little partial Frankenstrat pit guard and not the full one, I could get away with using a record and cutting it down for the pit guard. I am leaning heavily toward that. So I think I'm gonna have a black, yellow, and white Frankenstrat with the little pit guard and otherwise, not totally emulating the Frankenstrat. He even leaves the back open with all the springs exposed. I'm gonna cover that. But uh, these are my thoughts so far. This is not yet sanded. I'm gonna do some sanding on it. It's pretty good, but you can feel a little bit of roughness. It helps to get this really smooth before you even start. So I think I'm gonna make more videos of this one instead of just pictures so I can put together the progress, maybe like put some things in and four times speed or something so you see it happen really fast. We'll see what I do as time goes on, but there are my thoughts. We'll see where we go from here. Okay, this is now sanded. Pretty positive you cannot tell a difference on the video, but I went with about a 200 grit to start with. There were a couple of noticeable divots that I wanted to grind out, and so I didn't want to go with too high of a grit that... Uh, wasn't going to get that out, and then uh, once I was happy with that, I went over the whole thing with 400 grit, and that feels fine to have the body ready for painting. Um, once I get uh, between layers of paint and I'm getting the final clear coat on, you start going with much higher grits and the wet standing, 1,000, 2,000, 2,500. You wind up with a really smooth, beautiful finish, but we don't need to go that high of grit now. Um, I've got all the cavities here taped off. 
these tapings don't need to be a work of art. They only need to be approximate because all I'm looking to do is to keep these cavities from being caked with primer and paint. You don't need to really worry about any perfect lines or anything like that. So that's all done. And now we're ready for some priming. Right here, I have my super high-tech painting station. Um, I didn't have this in it before. It's the top of an old table that I broke. And so I use that on the plat as the platform I can set my body on. So then I can easily rotate the platform to get all sides. I used to have to try to delicately touch the underside of the guitar because the top was wet. Oh no, my friend, I have learned. So this box is to contain all the dust from the paint. There's a air filter there and a fan on the other side to suck as many dust particles as possible through. Uh, when it comes time to prime, I will still have these windows open and wear my proper ventilation mask. Uh, I don't believe I'm gonna do any priming this evening. It's starting to get a little late, gonna go spend some time with the fam, but this is what's to come. This has been a presentation of Busby Productions. Ah!